Okay. Universal evolutionary theory. Okay, now I got this thing pretty much set. Alright, so here's the deal. We know about evolution on the Earth, but this is universal evolutionary theory. Okay, everybody knows the Big Bang. Started out with the Big Bang. <coughs> and that's supposedly, boom! That's how we came into existence. Well, hundreds of millions of years later, anyway. The universe was made up of this little tennis ball, and it just went boom! And then all this stuff just kept coming out of it, and coming out, and coming out like it came out from another dimension or something. Okay, I'm getting off the subject. Anyway, here's the deal. Big Bang, then came the Earth. Now, here's the deal. Big Bang means uh, the universe all came from this one big explosion. All these particles and everything got expanding out of the universe and started forming things like suns and planets and uh, cosmoses, uh, universes, and so on and so forth. Planetary systems, you know, stuff like that. So the thing is, here's the deal. <coughs> um, the trajectory of the Big Bang in you know, the future that I come from, it's already been surmised over 200 years of observations. <coughs> well, actually, within about two years, 100 years of observations. <coughs> Data from starting back in the 20th century, they took that from there until the time that, that I'm from, and they've been able to kind of pinpoint uh, with some, what they believe to be some amount of accuracy where this Big Bang started. Okay, then the trajectory, or for those more educated, vector that the point of origin of the Big Bang would make with the Earth, you'll line those two up, and along that trajectory path, or vector, there has to be either between the origin of the Big Bang and the Earth, or beyond the Earth in the same trajectory or vector, planets or planetary systems with a planet in it that is Earth-like. But here's the trick. At a different evolutionary point, which brings us to other planets like the Earth, and this has a lot of implications. This has to do with the fact that if we can find a planet that's just like the Earth out there in the universe, which there has to be, but at a different evolutionary point, an early, earlier, excuse me, evolutionary point, we might be able to find on that planet resources and species of life that, as far as the Earth is concerned, have become extinct, but would exist on these other planets. Got it? Okay. Universal evolutionary theory. We can, in essence, by finding other planetary systems out there with an Earth-like planet that would develop the sa similar or same species as what we have here, we could actually say we found on another planet in an earlier evolutionary state, like 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million years ago when there were things like saber-toothed tigers, an Earth-like planet. Hey, go to that other planet, bring back their saber-tooths, and boom, you have them on Earth again. Go to those other planets, and the resources like things like um, oil are plentiful again, and you can either develop those planets, because it'd be kind of expensive to bring oil back all the way from this planet way out in the cosmos, or the universe, somewhere else in the universe, but the thing is, identifying these other planets <coughs> would give us the ability to replenish whatever fuel sources, if we had on, say, our spaceships, that are going to be operable in 2093. Uh, five big spaceships. There's stations out in space. Uh, the space stations that are being manufactured out in space because resources are brought from the Earth to the stations and they're manufactured in space itself so that you can manufacture these humongous ships that carry like five times... Uh, <coughs> Well, five saves five parts of the ship is nothing but fuel, and one part is living quarters and control. You know, the place where you fly the ship. You can go a long distance and carry a lot of uh, food resources and water resource. 
because these ships weigh next to nothing out in space. So you're building them big, putting a ton of supplies, food supplies, as well as uh, fuel supplies, and there you go. You can travel around looking for these planets, and in 2093 they're going to do that. They're going to put out these five ships in different directions to what they believe to be. Some of them are going to have resources. Others are going to contain um, scientific finds, like not only resources, of course, they want resources, but they also want to find things like uh, species that have been extinct since they're going to be there anyway. So they're looking at these other planets, possibilities to get the most amount of resources and, uh, say, maybe even samples on some of them. Well, I don't know if they're going to go to those planets. I don't know if they would want to go to them, but I, I don't think they did, but there was talk of them uh, going to look for species like the dinosaurs. If you, the whole thing is universal evolutionary theory is that you could find planets in a lower evolutionary, earlier evolutionary state, and you would see, basically be able to go back in time and see things like dinosaur species, things like uh, similar or exactly the same saber tooths, and things like that. So there it is, the universal evolutionary theory. So knowing where things are, where planetary systems that are the closest are being developed, and what evolutionary state they, the, the math equations say they should be exactly be at for us to find the resources, to find these certain species at what point they would be developing because of our own Earth history, we kind of have a, a template upon which we can kind of gauge certain planets at certain evolutionary points should contain these certain species or these certain resources. So that's the universal evolutionary theory. And the thing is, knowing where these planets are, once you take a ship out, you find some that are, are at the point where you have things like oil or uh, even just planets with water. Hydrogen technology, of course, in the future, you could, you could fuel your ship and just refuel it on a certain, shall we take from Star Trek and say M-class planets, or in this case, Earth-class planets. None of this M-class crap. They just call it Earth-class. <coughs> so anyway, five ships in the future, 2093, are going to head out, and they're going to do exactly that. They'll have the fuel, the, the, the manpower, the resources, the, and the uh, food supplies to go to these other planets enough to get there and then they should be able to replenish their food supplies and their fuel supplies and then just keep on going or come back. You know, some of them were planned, they, they planned to do that and they did. Uh, some of them came back, but some were also uh, sent on a little bit further before they came back. So that's what we did in 2093. <coughs> All the ships eventually came back. One had a few problems, but thank God they didn't have any just home safely. Um, but there, there was some really good finds. It's taken them a long time. It took them, uh, took them actually a long time. <coughs> Maybe you guys will have that in the future. Your 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 descendants will hear about this and know about it.